Well, here's another big CRT today, and this one is by far the nicest of the larger CRTs that I've been featuring in the last couple of months. This is the Sony PVM 2950Q. It was manufactured in May of 1999. The monitor runs on 100 to 120 volts, and it does accept 50 or 60 hertz, 3.7 amps. This does have the wonderful Sony logo on the back embedded in the plastic shell. There are three input lines here. We've got composite and S-video on line one and two. And then line three can be used for RGB and sync, like we've got set up here. Or you can also do component video. Okay, so it works perfectly. The only thing we're going to do is some servicing. So I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to show you this monitor, how it works, uh, a lot of the boards inside. The picture quality here is just unbelievable. This is the amazing tube on this 2950Q monitor. Now technically it's 27 inches measured diagonally. It's 600 TV lines of resolution. It's also got a about 0.8 millimeter dot pitch on the aperture grill so it makes a great sharp image here and it also looks pretty crisp. Now according to Sony's documentation it also has an anti-static slash anti-glare layer on it uh, but I've never taken the tube out of the chassis to actually verify that but according to the manual it is there. Inside this CRT you'll notice the boards are all pretty much situated towards the lower bottom portion of the monitor and then you have the neck board over here and our high voltage anno cap so don't mess with that but what we're going to do is we're going to remove these boards and we're going to service them and when we do that we'll take a further look at all the boards in particular what each one does and the only thing i wanted to show you was how this looks inside all right so let's take a closer look at the boards and the whole chassis now this is the complete chassis that we've removed here with all the boards together still I just like to take it all out in one big piece and then now we can disassemble this thing and we're going to take a closer look at each of these individual boards and talk about what each of them does and how to service them because there's some specific things on here that Sony messed up on that we need to make sure we take care of before this goes back to the customer. So we're going to take a look at the primary boards within this monitor. First off we do have our main chassis. This is our A board. And this has been serviced, but this is what's doing the primary work in this monitor. We've got our flyback attached right in here. So our flyback transformer is right here. And then in this area around that transformer, these are the capacitors that we've changed in this kit for deflection, which includes all these capacitors over here and then some more over here. The way to tell is they're generally marked and starting with the C5 moniker so c552 for example on this one down here my finger is on but we've replaced 25 capacitors within this board and this is again that primary board um, anything that's not in the uh, important sections we did not replace those capacitors because they tested good and uh, they're not receiving that high heat and usage like these other areas that are always receiving high heat in this circuit board um, one of the areas over here that looks like it would always need servicing but rarely does is this block. And this is actually the audio block in this monitor. So since it has its own audio amplifier, it has this extra stuff here. So it's always worth checking these capacitors. However, a lot of the times they're fine. Now one of the things that is really important with this board is it has some cards in it. One of them being this VC card. So the VC card, it comes out of this bay right here where it's normally slipped down into there and it attaches in that slot right there. And watch out, these slots do have a connection that you need to pull back a little bit so you can pull these cards out safely without damaging it. But the problem with these is these little uh, transistors right here, Q1811, and I think it's Q1810, right, or 1806. But what happens is these were not applied to any kind of heat sink like this one is, or like any of the other ones on this main board. See how they're on a heat sink? 
Well, there's no heat sink there. So these just over time get really, really hot. And uh, the way they dissipate that heat is back into the board and back into the legs. And over time, the solder on this, these points will break down. And then uh, once that happens, you get a drooping screen. Like it almost looks U-shaped on the image. Now this one did not have that problem. But in case you do have that problem, what you need to do is reflow the solder on both of those ICs right there and uh, then or transistors and you will be good to go. Um, you don't even need to replace them. It's, it's literally just solder breakdown. Now what I do to service it is I saw re remove the solder uh, from the points, add new solder, flow that in, clean it up, and I also reflow the solder on all the points surrounding it in that immediate area. Um, this board has also been recapped. There are six capacitors uh, on this board, so it's a pretty good idea to go ahead and recap it if you're going to go ahead and pull it to service it. All right, here's the rest of the boards in this monitor that uh, we're yet to go over. First off, we have a UA board, which is just our speaker in and out and our control S in and out. So there's that little board. Uh, right here is the C board, which is our neck board. And this is going to drive in our voltage into our CRT tube itself. It has also been recapped and then the parts have been inspected thoroughly on it and solder has been reflowed where it's needed. So you should always check that on these neck boards. Next to the neck board is an interface board here that is labeled the B board. So a lot of the uh, communication, you can see a lot of chips and ICs on there. Not a very hot board, so really normally you don't have to mess with the capacitors on here. Um, also going to be some color processing on that board. Now this is a board you may need to check out, but Sony really designed these excellently. And the capacitors tend to uh, really live very long. So it, the first thing to do is to just clean it up and check out all the capacitors and test them. But this is your primary power supply in this board where your... AC comes in, it is the G board. Your AC voltage will come in from the wall and then through this board it's gonna be processed and transferred into usable DC voltage and other forms of AC voltage that the monitor will then use um, to power up the tube and everything else. So that's a look at these boards. They have been serviced. I've shown you just some of close-ups of these boards but you could tell again that We've got capacitors changed in there, the boards have been cleaned, and um, all the solder looks good on it. And so that's our set of primary boards on this monitor. All right, here's our chassis put back together. All the boards are reassembled. The only board I did not show you yet is this board that starts over here and it connects the same way that our other big B board does. It connects to some connections in our main board down there. And then it goes and it swings over here and takes a turn over here and then it leads to our input board here in our AC outlet. Now the cool thing about this monitor is there's some hinges or some plastic uh, spots here that you can un or that you can undo, snap free. And then this whole input board is made so it actually swings out. See, it's, it's designed to be on a hinge over here, which is a really, really cool design. You see the uh, current actually goes through that hinge. So it's got a cool hinge design here if you ever need to get in the back and service this or check out the flyback or something. That is the way that you open this. So anyway, that's the last board. The only other board we didn't cover was this little junction board which I left in place. Just an H board down there. Now we're going to get this thing back together with the tube and see how it looks after servicing. Now here's what the back of this tube looks like. Again, here's our anode cap area. This has been fully cleaned. This is our, dark, our darker tinted Aquadag coating over here. So again, you don't wanna be heavy on the cleaning on this because it's important to remain in place. Now the things I did notice on here when I looked at this during the inspection and cleaning period was that we had uh, someone come in and adjust the convergence rings and also remove some magnets here that would have been in installed by the factory for purity reasons. So once we get it turned back on, since it's been serviced, then we need to uh, check things out and make sure we don't have to make a lot of adjustments to either the convergence rings or add some type of strips or magnets back to the picture. Other things you'll notice, this is just our degaussing strap. So when you hear that large gong noise, that's just this degaussing strap having a bolt of energy go through it and make that magnetic field and clear up the 
tube and all the electrons. There's the orange label on the 600 line Trinitron tube. And then you have Sony's amazing yoke on this monitor, which actually does a tilt correction within the service menu. So you never have to get back here and tilt correct this yoke. Hopefully it can remain set where it was from the factory. All right, guys, we have one remaining board back here that's under our tube and it is our V board, which should have some communication with our neck board over here in there. And then uh, that should help with convergence also. Okay, our chassis and tube set has been reassembled. I do have some S video going from a Super Nintendo. And we have a picture here. So I'm sorry the picture doesn't look great. It's because I'm not set up to really film the CRT. But I did want to show you that after all the servicing and uh, taking it apart and putting it back together, that now it is still working. And the next step will be to adjust this. And then we'll take one final look at it uh, after it's been adjusted and see how it performs. Well, the monitor's got its final set of adjustments. And I'm not going to go over the adjustments today because I've done that in a past video, which I will link in the description. But you will need some type of a remote. There is a standard remote for this CRT, but you can't use almost any generic uh, remote from a TV at that time. This one is a RMY137A. We're going to pull up the 240p test suite and take a final look at some stuff. And again, we're using RGB right now through a modified Super Nintendo that has Voltar's RGB kit in it. And then that's being run into the monitor. All right, let's get a chance here to take a look at some of these test patterns. First, our monoscope pattern. Really sharp in the center. The convergence looks really good. Um, the aspect ratio is set properly. So the geometry looks pretty good on this. This tube still looks good. Look at the colors. You can see them all the way up into the last quadrant there on the scale over here. Then it goes full dark there, but then it grades up to more intense of each color. And here is some horizontal scrolling action from the 240p test suite. All right, guys, that's going to end it for this video on the PVM 2950Q. I will leave you with some gameplay footage for a couple minutes here so you can see some nice scan lines. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like, and I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.